in sustainable agriculture we also call it diversified integrated farming system because one of the main uh, pillars of sustainable agriculture is increasing diversity crop diversity over period of time we have made uh, only few varieties and monocropping the order of the day but as a result the problem of fertility and problem of pest uh, happens and also the yield slowly grows down because the soil fertility is affected so small farmers also middle farmers but small farmers especially should try to go back to traditional system but improve that in according to scientific principles when we apply the principle of diversity to home garden to make it nutritionally more rich to make it sure that we get all the nutrients necessary for human body health healthy life we look at the diversity principle in applied way the diversity is uh, partly by improving the crop mixing and if it is shown in line rather than mixing all seeds it is called intercropping line intercropping sometime it is called also companion cropping mane what kind of crop it grows well with each other the second principle is uh, trying to look at crop rotation which crop follows which crop follows which crop and sometimes we try release we try the to not plow and make the soil uh, lose the residual moisture but when one crop is almost 80% finished that is the time we introduce the second crop so that it can uh, continue and sometime use the support of the previous crop to grow so these three principles of intercropping mixed intercropping crop rotation and crop relay they lead to crop diversity for example in a small home garden if we apply the principle of the mixing or intercropping so suppose i have a five feet wide bed here i will in the first line put about three tomatoes or brinjals and in the second two in the middle and then again three again two in this way we we plant some of the larger plants like brinjal or egg plant uh, or tomato or chili but it is a erect plant in between the area i in between where there is three and there is two so here there will be two beans and there there will be three beans so each line will have five plants and that we will complete the whole bed like that so we mix a bean crop maybe french bean and because it grows in the winter so and we grow a rabi crop like post monsoon crop like brinjal or tomato and to cover up the soil i plant maybe dhania coriander so it means coriander also will cover the soil and grow in the shade 
and also it has a strong smell will which deter many of the pest of the main crop so by doing like this we get more yield from the same field and also we do companion crop so this is one example as far as rotation is involved the principle is that wherever we possible we follow a leafy vegetable or a fruit vegetable which demands more nutrient from the soil we follow that with a bean so for example uh, in a dry area like this in summer if i grow amaranth leaf amaranth because many kind of amaranth is available and it tolerates drought so with some irrigation uh, i will grow amaranth and in the rainy season i will follow that for example with uh, with cluster bean guar and in the winter season i can grow some spice like methi methi is a spice but also is legume so it will help to maintain the year round produce something and maintain the soil fertility this is the basic idea of rotation if we take the example of relay and apply that principle to home garden so for example we grow in the summer we are growing uh, some erect crop maybe lettuce finger when lettuce finger is almost finished around that time as a relay crop in between the lettuce finger we put seeds of pole beans so the pole bean is climbing on the lettuce finger plant and when both of this is finished most of the crop residue is harvested and fed to the animals and same time we grow maybe again tomato or chili in the field so it ha- it is already we are leaving some of the thing mulch and so in between we just create space and plant the seedling and we don't have to bother about the rest of the space so these are examples of how we apply the principle of intercropping of rotation and of crop release if we go to a semi irrigated small farm for market which is different from home garden because home garden we choose the plant mainly according to nutritional quality rather than market price but suppose i was uh, i had a 100 200 square meter or some land and with some irrigation possible i am growing some vegetables for selling in the market so either so in summer season there may not be enough water to grow anything or we will see but rainy season for example we can grow makka the there maize or corn and post monsoon season we can in the in the time itself we can intercrop the maize with some kind of uh bush wheat and later on in the winter season we can use a any kind of climbing bean or we can use a small bitter gourd climbing to use the maize as a maize plant as a support if it was a vegetable system that i was growing only vegetables for selling in the market so um, i can grow cowpea during summer which is followed 
because coffee need tolerates the heat and little bit dryness. And then I followed it with a lady's finger during the summer and late summer and rainy season. The lady's finger can remain in the field. And then in the rain, in the winter season, post monsoon season, I can grow brinjal or chili or tomato along with the kind of companion crop of coriander as we were saying. So in this way, uh, year round we can do. So these are two ecosystems, two ecosystems where we apply the principle of diversification. Third kind of ecosystem uh, can be non-irrigated dryland ecosystem. So where is it is only rain fed. So in rain fed agriculture, uh, it is not possible to plow after one crop is finished because there is not enough moisture and if we try to uh, plow again in the early winter, uh, we can lose much moisture. So the mixed cropping, intercropping system that we follow is, for example, if we have one bigger or whatever, three, four hundred square meter land, we, we plow it one time before the rains start. And then itself, we grow four, five lines of any grain, for example, sorghum, for example, uh, maize, for example, palm millet. So we grow some tall plants, five lines, and then we take some legume, which is preferably little shorter than the tall plant. For example, we are using pigeon pea or can be goar also. Then, so three lines of goar, and then we go for three lines of any oil seed, for example, sesame or niger. These are oil seeds which tolerate dry situation, so we grow them. So we have, according to height, we have big, then little small, then little small. So we slowly come down and then we have black gram or uh, cowpea or some other kind of crop. And then we go opposite way. We have again the oil seed. So we have grains, we have legume, we have oil seed, we have again some vegetable or legume. And then again we are growing up. So one time we plant, we do the mirror image, automatic opposite in the... And we, we try to see that the shade of the plant, tall plant, is not falling on the shorter plant. And this can be done by planting these crops along the east-west axis, sunrise-sunset axis. These kind of systems, we try to mix crops which have different root depth and different maturity period. So we have plants like pigeon pea which matures in six, seven months. We have grains which mature in three, four months. We have cowpea which mature in two, three months. So same time we plant only one time but we harvest four or five times. This is the principle which is followed in rent-fed agriculture. In the lowland rice system, naturally there is a lot of diversity. A lot of weeds which grow with rice originally, traditionally, they are edible. So there are more than 25, 30 kind of weeds. We can choose among them which one we want to keep and which one we... 
So these are because rice system, lowland paddy system is a waterlogged system. One of the um, crops which can, we can grow on the buns but spread in the rice is uh, kolmishak that we call the kolmishak or Hindi karamoa or botanical name is uh, Ipomia aquatica. So we can grow that and in between the rice it can spread on the water from the buns. On the buns, depending on the situation, we can plant some other crop like pigeon pea or sometime other kind of grams which we can grow on the buns depending on how much is the risk of total inundation. We can do relay cropping with rice that when rice is finished, we one month before harvest, normally we allow the water to go out. So around that time, the when we drain the rice field and allow it to ripen, allow the grains to ripen, one week after letting the water out, we can spread uh, seeds of, for example, linseed, PC, uh, some kind of dal like kulti, some kind of uh, oil seed like mustard. We can spread those seeds without plowing and we allow them to grow. And later on when we harvest, some of the plants we get trampled on but it, ha it does not die, it helps them actually to grow. So we don't plow again. We, this is possible in a rice field where the mm, soil is good and holds moisture and with the, we call it often in technical language, residual moisture crop. So whatever moisture is remaining on the field, if we can have deep-rooted plants growing on the rice field, they can use those moisture. So in summer, usually we grow only just before rice, we grow a green manure crop like maybe Crotolaria or like maybe Sespania aculeata or something like that. That grows only for one month, six weeks and then we incorporate that in the soil to increase the organic matter content and then we plant the rice and on the bund, as we said, we can plant pigeon pea or some other kind of gram. And in between, we allow the karimba to grow. And the after rice, as a relay crop, we grow some oil seeds and legumes. This is the this is uh, this was the traditional system, and this can be even done today with a little bit proper spacing. Also, if there is a rice field on the perimeter, along the perimeter where we make buns, just in between bun and rice, we can create a 50 centimeter wide drain all along. And we can grow some kind of palos which like that muddy kind of situation, which some varieties of palo can grow in dry land and some other varieties of palo which can grow in wetland. And the leaves as well as sometimes the roots, they are edible. So that also increases the income and diversity in a recipe. So these are different examples of using the principle of diversity, crop diversity by intercropping, by crop mixing, by crop rotation and by crop relay.